Hi, it's Nell. The video that is coming up was shot in July. It's now November, almost the middle of November. And I was just looking at it this morning and it was starting to thunder. It was starting to rain. It was during the monsoon season. I say that, but in quite a few of the clips, especially the beginning clips, you'll hear a buzzing noise in the background. And I didn't even realize when I was filming it, but those are the cicadas. So I hope it isn't too distracting for you because the video coming up is all about growing beautiful kalanchoes indoors. On with the video. Hi, it's Nell. I really wasn't planning on doing this video, but because my recently purchased Kalinkoe is so beautiful and so open, I thought I would do a video about growing Kalinkoe's indoors. So stick around for that. And these are really easy to take care of. This is Kalinkoe blasfeldiana, um, commonly referred to as Kalinkoe calancho. Many people say that. Or when I was in the interior escaping trade, we just say cows. And this one is easy to find everywhere. It's sold in grocery stores, um, nurseries, um, online, garden centers. So you can find this one with no problem at all. And the newer varieties are Calendiva and Grandiva. I believe this is a Calendiva. The Grandiva has even bigger flowers. That's why she's called the Grandiva. Now I'm doing this video mainly for if you want to keep it for a few years, if you're just going to have it for its bloom time, which is, it has a pretty long bloom time. Um, it's a little hotter here because I'm in the desert, so that makes it go a bit faster. But I've had them in bloom for up to two to three months, especially if you get them tight. So if you want them for just a short period of time, it's not as crucial to follow everything. But if, if you want it for the long haul, this is it. And it is starting to thunder, so every once in a while you might hear something. It's the monsoon season here in Tucson, so for the past five days, every day we've been getting rain. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's, a, it's been great, so. And lots of spectacular lightning storms. But back to the flower. Um, I'm going to start with light. And it likes as bright light as you can give it without being in direct sun. Nice medium to high light is great. Now, if you have it in direct hot sun, it will burn. If you put it outside for the summer, be sure to put it in partial shade. You don't want it to get any sun from noon on because it can burn. If you have it for the short haul, the light isn't quite as important. Just know that if you buy the plant with the flowers closed or really tight, and if you have it in low light, they aren't going to open as well. And this plant comes in quite a few colors, uh, white, pinks, magenta, yellow. As you can see, this one is um, goes from yellow peach to orange, orange, red, single flower, double flower. So there are lots of options that way. The foliage is pretty much always the same. It is a succulent. By the way, it's got these fleshy, fleshy leaves and stems. And I will leave more information on caring for them indoors in the blog post. I always go into more detail there. So if you are really interested in that, just head over to uh, joyousgarden.com or you can follow the link below, which will be in, th in the description box. So on to watering. You don't want to keep this plant constantly soaking wet. What you want to do is you want to water it. You want to let the water drain out, and then you want to let it dry out. 
because as I said, it is a succulent, so it will rot out. So what I do is I water mine, even here in the desert, I water it about every two weeks. Um, if it's in a small pot, if it's in a four inch pot, you might have to water it a little more. Or in this size pot, if you're not as hot, you might have to water it every th three weeks. You'll just have to see how yours does, but you don't want to overwater it. And what I found is that when they are flowering, they take a little bit more water. I just think this looks so pretty in this vintage daisy pot. The pot is from the 50s, so pretty. Happen to be outside at the moment, but th this uh, beautiful calicoi of mine grows indoors. Now I'm moving on to fertilizing. And they aren't fussy as to fertilizer at all. You may not need to do it if you feel you need to do it then do it in the spring and then maybe once again in mid to late summer and you can just use a balanced houseplant fertilizer that you water in that is just fine i'm standing here because it's really starting to thunder quite loudly so <laughs> i thought if i was close here it would be better anyway uh soil when i repot mine i use half potting soil and half succulent and cactus mix. All succulent and cactus mix is okay. All potting soil is okay too, but you just have to be careful with the watering because potting soil holds more water. The reason that I mix in the succulent and cactus mix is that it really aids, aids the drainage and you want it to really be able to drain well because as I said, you don't want it to stay wet. And how I feed mine is I just put a half inch layer of worm compost on the top every spring. So moving on to pests. Mine might have gotten aphids. I don't know if it's as much of a problem indoors, but I do know that they are subject to mealybug. And also I have read that they are s subject to aphids indoors. Um, I've done a, vi a video about aphids and mealybug and scales and all sorts of insects that house plants tend to get so I will leave a link to those in the blog post in case yours gets any of these pests but I hope it does not <laughs> so I had to move over to this patio because it's raining and I just I just want to get this done so you can see my lovely Dracaena marginata variegata which I did a video on the transplanting I'm gonna get that up soon I hope and my beautiful fish hooks, Senecia, which I have to keep on cutting because it's all over the ground, it's growing so fast. But anyway, I just want to give you a heads up about this, this lovely lady here. You don't want to overwater it, as I said, because it is subject to powdery mildew. So you want to make sure that you don't do that and you also you don't want to mist or spray it because the leaves do not need it if you're keeping it for the long haul and it's filthy dirty and you want to clean it off once a year that's fine but because this foliage is so dense and the leaves are so fleshy it will get mildew and that will eventually lead to it all the leaves falling off and it totally rotting out so a word of warning about that Okay, I'm going to zoom in on the pretty flowers again because I'm going to talk about flowering and how to get it to bloom again. Now, it's not really easy to get it to bloom again, and some people have a hard time with this, but I'm going to explain what you need to do, and you can decide if it, if it is worth it. Mine that I grew outdoors just naturally flowered again on their own because the cycle they need to go through just happens that I'm going to talk about right now. So like poinsettias, these need longer periods of darkness to bloom again. So what you want is long, uh, sunny days followed by equal or slightly longer periods of darkness. So like in September or October, you need to give it at least 12 hours, 12 or 14 hours of complete darkness. So that might be a guest room or a laundry room you would have it in that you don't have the lights on at night, all night long. If you're in your kitchen, your living room, your bedroom, 
that's not going to work because it needs complete darkness. So if you do this, if you give it those nice long periods of, of darkness and the nice sunny days, by December it should be blooming again. And mine that I'm growing indoors is uh, in a guest bathroom. It has a skylight above. And it has been blooming off and on for like, probably like nine months. It probably stayed in bloom for, actually what I'll say is it stayed in bloom for quite a few months and then it bloomed again because it hasn't been growing inside all that long. So it just, it just naturally gets that darkness at night. So that is what it needs. They're over probably 150 species of Kalanchoes. And what I mean by species, at the very beginning I said Kalanchoe blasfeldiana. Blas, blasfeldiana is the species, in case you don't know. There are many different Kalanchoes. And I grew, I grew probably about 10 of them or 12 of them in my garden in Santa Barbara. It was a great, great climate for fleshy succulents. But they do tend to get stemmy and leggy over time. The, the Kalanchoe thrissifolia, which is the, or the Luciae, which is the very popular paddle plant. I had a bed of them growing under my giant bird of paradise. And after the third year, I needed to cut them all down because they got, they just lost all their lower, lower foliage and they had all this beautiful foliage at the top, but they were just all stem. So I cut them back, I healed them over, and then I replanted them. And the stem that I cut them off of, I cut that down so that new growth came off of that. So this being said, this is going to lead into, into, into pinching because calanchoes can get leggy and stemmy over time, especially if they're in lower light than they prefer. Okay, so you saw my beautiful Kalanchoe. This is my not-so-beautiful Kalanchoe. It looked a lot better. It is growing in my guest bathroom. I was in San Diego for almost three weeks. I had a, that there was a really bad ant infestation while I was gone, so I had to arrange for someone to come in and uh, treat. It was environmental, you know, but this plant had a nest in it, and it had to be dura-drenched and it just hasn't quite recovered. But I can still talk about pinching with this because it wasn't this, yeah, on the leggy, but this is how they can get. And I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna keep this one because I might plant the other one in here after it's through blue blooming. And this pot also has two oniums in it, which were doing really well, that you know, there were three, but I had to take one out because it had completely died. So I'm gonna take the aeoniums out and just plant them in one of my planters outside. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to pinch them to keep them fuller. This is pretty stemmy. I've never cut them all the way back, and I'm not sure if any new growth will come out of there because I just always pinch, pinch, pinch. So if you have any information to share on that, please do. But what you would do is do, do this kind of thing just to get it to fill in. Of course, it flowers off of that, so, so you would want to try to do your pinching in this spring. Then I would cut there, and I would cut off here and here. As I said, this one is really leggy. But what you can also do is you can cut off a stem such as this here. Oh gosh, oh, 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 the leaves are falling off now. I take them at an angle, the cuttings at an angle, and then strip off these leaves and then hopefully there's a bit more foliage at the top. And then you could cut that and then you could let it heal off and then you could root it. I should get my hand out of the way, that would help. Oh, hopefully you can see it there and then you could root that. Oh, and you can, also, you can also propagate these not only by stem cutting, but you can also propagate them by division. Because here there's one, two, 
three separate plants almost because what they do with these is they just um, put, put in smaller plugs so there are separate plants. So that's another way that you could do it by division. Oh, and if you're wondering why I'm not sitting in that chair, which would probably be better, is because it is getting a little bit of rain there. <laughs> so this is my dry chair. But I hope you have found this video to be helpful. And be sure to look in the uh, description box because there will be a link to that post. I've always, I've always, and this is the third video I filmed. <laughs> I've also done a video and a post about growing Kalanchoes, both indoors and outdoors. Did that a few years ago. I will leave that link down below for you too. So as always, I thank you for your likes, your comments, your subscribes. I really appreciate them. I have a lot more videos, gardening videos. I don't seem to be doing that many crafting videos these days, but who knows, maybe I'll get back to one or two of those. Um, coming your way. So let's get out in the garden or into our home gardens and make our worlds a more beautiful place. I thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.